Welcome to the University of South Carolina's Payment Request Entry Training. A payment request is a self-service feature which provides end users with the ability to enter miscellaneous expenses for payment without requiring a purchase requisition. It reduces processing time, making payments occur faster. This video will demonstrate how to enter a payment request for payment reimbursement. Most users who have access to entering a purchase requisition should also have access to enter a payment request. If you have questions after viewing this video, please reach out to the Accounts Payable Department by using the email address accountspayable at sc.edu. After logging into PeopleSoft, you are presented with the PeopleSoft landing page. Use the main menu link at the very top of the page to begin navigation. The options available on your menu may look very different from this one. You will likely have less options available. Because this menu is so long, we are going to use the sort order icon to change the sort order to ascending descending or alphabetical to make items easier to find. Now that the menu is in alphabetical order, let's navigate to the Payment Request Center page using the menu path, main menu, Employee Self-Service, Payment Request Center. The Payment Request landing page is divided into three sections. At the top left is the Request Summary area, which provides a count of the payment request created by you. In this case, a total of 14 payment requests are listed here. The top right section, Recent Messages, houses messages entered by the payment request approvers or the Accounts Payable Department that require attention. And the bottom section contains a listing of all the payment requests with detailed information specific to each request. From here you can add, edit, view, and cancel the payment request. Let's click the Create button to enter a new payment request. On this payment request page, a step-by-step -step activity guide lets you know where you are in the overall payment request process. As you can see, there are four basic steps. Step 1 begins with the summary information. There are a few things you have to populate here. The business unit will automatically populate as USC01. Invoice number and date are the next fields you have to enter. It is very important that you enter the invoice number and date exactly the way they are on the invoice. If the invoice number is all caps, enter all caps. If it has a hyphen, make sure to include that as well. If the invoice does not provide you with a number, then enter the date you created the request and the supplier name or individual's last name. For example, 0811-2016 underscore Smith. The date field should be populated with the request entry date as well. There is no invoice number for today's payment request, so enter today's date and the supplier name. 10-04-2016 underscore Jimmy Johns. And the invoice is 10-04-2016. Why are these two fields so important? They will help Accounts Payable track what invoices are being paid, as well as give us the opportunity to make sure we are not making duplicate payments. The next section is the description, and this is where you begin by entering the payment request type. The payment request matrix provides the type in the far left-hand column. If the type is library, then enter library. School of Medicine, enter SOM, or reimbursement, enter reimbursement. This will help differentiate the different types of payments for our AP staff and provides a consistent way to enter descriptions. Please refer to your matrix for a full listing of types. The payment request type for today's request is food, not individual, reimbursement, 
Gamecock leaders. Completing these two fields correctly will help you move your request along in the system. Before moving on to the other fields, I'm going to click the Save for Later button. This is highly recommended because it will create a request ID and give you the opportunity to complete or edit the request if your session times out. Next, be sure to attach all important documentation for the type of payment request you are creating. Please refer to the payment request matrix as it outlines what is needed for each type. A food, not individual reimbursement type payment request requires a list of participants and the invoice, so attach these two items. It's important to remember that the system will not allow you to move on to the next step until all necessary documents are attached. Now let's move on to the amount section. When entering reimbursements, enter the cost subtotal only. You do not need to enter miscellaneous freight or tax. So for example, if you have a reimbursement to Mandy Kibler for $100 and there is $5 tax, you would enter $105 in the cost subtotal. For supplier invoices, enter all of the cost subtotal less tax and freight. Be sure to enter the tax and freight separately. For this example, goods were purchased for $192.94. $175.40 was for goods and services. Enter it in the cost subtotal field. And $17.54 for tax, enter it in the tax amount field. As you can see, when you click in another field, the system automatically calculates your total amount. Finally, Notes Comments area is where you will enter any special handling, attachment, or pickup for payment such as hold for pickup, mail to specific address, or please print an express check at Aiken. For this request, the payment needs to be mailed to a specific address, so add mail to specific address. and then provide the address. Now that the first step is complete, click the next button to move on to step two. Step two is your supplier information. Here are a couple of tips when searching and selecting a supplier. If you are looking for a supplier that happens to be an international supplier, you must change the country code to whatever that country is. For example, if your supplier is in Munich, Germany, you must change the country code to Germany, and then you will be able to see the supplier ID out there when you search. If you forget to do this, when you search for a supplier, you will not see any IDs for international, only for the U.S. Another tip, when searching for a supplier, it is most reliable when you search by supplier name. If you are searching for a company, type that company's name. Jimmy John supplied the food for this request, so type that in the supplier name field and click the search button. After you click search, it will bring up a list of all suppliers that have the name Jimmy John's in it. If the list is too large, you can add additional information to the name field to narrow the search. When selecting your supplier, be certain you are selecting the correct supplier and location. This will be very important as you go forward because potentially if you choose the wrong supplier, the wrong person will get paid. 
The AP staff will check to make sure the supplier matches what is on the attached invoice, but it's really important that you choose the correct one. Also, for those suppliers that have multiple locations, these will be clearly defined in payment request. Jimmy John's is used a lot at USC Campus Wide and uses all three locations, Divine Street, Gervais Street, and Garner's Ferry Road. Notice different locations for Jimmy John's are in the list. To select a Columbia location, click the multiple link. Select the correct location. The Jimmy John's and Divine Street was used, so select that location. Notice the supplier address has been populated. Now we're ready to move on to step three. Click the next button. So now we are on to step three, the invoice details. All of the invoice information should have transferred to this invoice detail from step one. If it did not, please ensure you enter the information as requested in step one. Once verified, click the Add Lines button to add chart field and accounting details. Enter the line information just like you would on a purchase requisition. Enter the description, but the quantity and unit price are not necessary as long as you enter the line amount. And the line amount will be the cost subtotal of $175.40. This is the before tax amount. Use the Office Location Lookup button to select your specific office location. This will help determine the tax. Click the Lookup button. And use the Description field to help narrow your search and then click Lookup. Select your office location from the list. For this request, select location 029608. Now it's time to enter your accounting detail line. This includes everything that is required. Operating unit, department, fund, account, and class. You would add PC business unit, project, and activity, but only if you are charging this to a project. You can use the scroll bar to view all fields if necessary. So let's add our chart field information. But before we begin, we need to add our before tax amount in the amount field. Our operating unit is CL008. Our department, 708055. Our fund code, BR100. Our account, 53005. And our class, 802. If you need to charge to multiple accounting lines, use this plus sign to add a new accounting line. If you have a $100 invoice and you want to charge two different departments or projects, you can do so by adding additional lines. Also, you may notice here in the right-hand corner a speed chart key field. This functionality is currently not available, but we are hoping in this new fiscal year to create some speed charts and speed types. This will give you the capability to select a speed type which will automatically populate the accounting details for you. All of my chart field information is entered. Now click OK to complete this step. The chart field error messages are new features in payment request. If you enter a department that does not go with that fund, or a PC business unit that doesn't go with the department you entered, these error messages appear in red here at the top of the page. The message would tell you what lines have invalid chart fields. You will not be able to proceed to the next step 
until you correct the invalid chart fields. If you are not sure what the valid chart field is, please see the conversion crosswalk for assistance. The navigation to the conversion crosswalk is Main Menu, USC Conversion, USC Chart Field Mapping, USC Department Fund Code. If you enter a chart field that you know is valid but you receive an error message, please contact the Accounts Payable Department because there may be a conversion issue that will need to be fixed. This new feature will help make sure things are getting coded correctly to the proper operating unit, department, and funds. To complete the final step, click the Next button. The last and final step is to review and submit, or you can save for later if you haven't done so already. This will allow you to go back and finish a request or fix any errors you may need help with. Before submitting the payment request, click the Review button to review the details of your request. It is highly recommended to review your payment request because it gives you a summary of what you entered. Take some time to make sure the information is correct before clicking the Submit button because once a payment request is submitted, it cannot be edited. If all of the information looks good, click the Return button. Once you hit Submit, your request automatically moves through Workflow, and we have four different levels of Workflow. We have two at the Department, a third level if it's a contract and grants, and the fourth level is accounts payable. It is very important for you to know who your approval levels are in your department and how they are going to be routed. The payment request is complete and all of the information is correct. Now hit the Submit button. When you click the Submit button, the system takes you back to the Payment Request Center landing page. Here you can see your request ID, keep track of the request status, and view request details. Notice the request does not have a red pen next to it. This means it has been submitted and therefore can't be edited. At this point, edits can only be made if the request is sent back to you by an approver asking you to make changes. That's it. Now you are ready to enter a payment request of your own. Thanks for attending today's payment request entry tutorial. Click the button to complete the PeopleSoft course completion form. Have a great day.